Hey guys, if you follow my channel, you know that I like vintage pens, I like new pens. I want to share with you something, uh, actually, some things, plural, because I've got two of them here. The Schaefer PFM. Schaefer is my top two pen brands of all time. American made, generally, from the 1950s and into the 60s, the PFM. You know, in the 1950s, Schaefer developed the Snorkel, and I've got several Snorkels here in my collection. And the PFM is something that probably could not be released today. PFM, Pen for Men. Now, when I think back to like the 1960s in the show Mad Men that ran on AMC, Don Draper could probably come up with a pretty good ad campaign and be able to get off Pen for men. Nowadays, with the political correctness stuff, you'd never be able to do it. But I've got two PFMs here. Pens for me. For a man. So, they were designed and marketed to go for male clientele. The Snorkel was probably one of the more innovative and one of the more complex pens that were out there. This is a demonstrator version of a Schaefer Snorkel. And I want to show you a little bit about how the snorkel works rather than show it on the PFM because both of these are inked. And I don't feel like squirting ink everywhere. So, I bought this as a demonstrator for this very purpose. So, the innards of these two operate on the same general principle as does the snorkel. That doesn't mean it looks exactly like this on the inside. As a matter of fact, if you want to know what one of these looks like on the inside, I will link a video uh, to my buddy Steph over in England um, with Grand Mia Pens where he actually does a video on how to take these apart. And even if you just watch the first five or ten minutes, you'll be able to uh, see these. Uh, well, it's kind of torn apart. Now, here we go. This is a snorkel. I've shown you Schaefer snorkels here before on my channel. But these have a blind cap here at the bottom. And you got a blind cap here. What you would do is twist the blind cap and see this little tube here. It's going to extend that tube, which is a snorkel. The idea is that you can dip this into ink without having to dip your nib into the ink to be able to suck it up. And therefore, you wouldn't have to blot off or clean off your nib or get ink all over your fingers. Now... You see here, this little metal band, how that's expanded. And this has the touchdown filling system. You still have an ink sack inside of here. And you would press down this tube. And that would develop some air pressure that would squeeze that sack. And then release, just like you would be using a lever. Or, um, let's say, a sleeve filler. Or a coin filler. Or an aerometric converter. So you would do that several times and watch the mechanism here. Twist and you notice that that snorkel is retracting at the same time. All right. All right, guys, let's go ahead and show you how to fill this particular pen. Uh, I showed you how to use a snorkel. So let's go ahead and take off the cap, set it aside. And you do want to go ahead and extend that snorkel by twisting the blind cap. And as you can see, the snorkel extends. And then you want to pull it and check it. Make sure it's empty, first of all. But you hear that? You hear that little air expression? Good. That's what you want to hear. So let's get our bottle of ink. The idea is supposed to be that you can extend and put the snorkel in the ink without putting the nib into the ink. So let's go ahead and try that. Depress. Do it a few times. Pull it again. Then wait. All right, we've done it about three times, so that should give us a pretty good fill, hopefully, at least for demonstration purposes. Retract your snorkel. 
So generally, a PFM is just a Schaefer snorkel in an oversized package. This has been called the PFM the perfect pen by several people who have been doing pen videos that you may have watched who uh, are actually not even doing pen videos anymore. This one guy in particular said that the PFM was his favorite pen and possibly the most perfect pen that was ever developed. You know, I can understand why. I got this one first. PFM had several generations. 1958, 10 years before I was ever born, up through around 1968, they produced the PFM. Um, you had the PFM, and then you had a PFM 2, and then 3, and then 4, in at least 5 generations. I've heard people talk about more, but I, there are well-documented 5 generations of PFMs. And the difference from generation to generation is more or less the color and the material. This is a PFM 2. This is a PFM 3. I was trying to get a PFM 5 because the 5 is something that I really like the looks of and they came in various colors. Matter of fact, I've got some documentation here and taking a look so that I don't have to guess. You know, the PFM 1, single color with a plastic cap and barrel, had a polished stainless steel clip and cap band and palladium silver nib. Keep that in mind, the palladium silver nib. The PFM 1 is the only model that didn't have the Schaefer white dot on it. The PFM 2, which is this, frosted stainless steel cap and a plastic barrel, a polished stainless steel clip, which you see here, uh, and a cap band and a palladium silver nib. PFM 3, which is this, they were all single color plastic cap and barrel, gold filled clip and cap band, and a 14 karat gold nib. The PFM 4, had a stainless steel cap, plastic barrel, gold filled cla uh, clip, and plunger uh, end plate, and a 14 carat, carat gold nib. Now, on the fives, you'll see that instead of just having like a plastic, uh, this is basically an injection molded plastic, um, and, but it has on the end, it has a nice little uh, gold colored cap that I've seen on some of them. Uh, on the five, a gold plated cap, uh, plastic barrel, gold filled clip and plunger cap end plate and a 14 karat gold nib. It was the five that I was trying to get here recently, uh, but I didn't manage to uh, procure one of those. But it has a nice, had a nice beautiful burgundy barrel. They came in several colors um, that were very uh, desirable. Some are harder to find than others. And quite honestly, I don't understand the, uh, the scarcity or the love for some of those particular colors. But as you can see, I've got black here, a very dark blue here. And that's one of the things about the PFM2 is it was a different color cap uh, contrasting with the barrel, whereas the three you can see here is plastic cap and plastic barrel. Now, like the rest of Schaefer snorkels, uh, the PFMs were produced in a variety of colors. You had black, blue, burgundy, green, and gray. And I'll put some links uh, to some web uh, pages if you want to go see what some of those look like. The rarest were green, blue, and gray. Gray, I don't know, I've seen them. <laughs> I wasn't a big fan of what I saw for the gray, um, but I do have the blue. Black, you can see, would probably be very common. Um, the snorkel, this is essentially an oversized version of the snorkel. And from 58, 59 up to uh, 68 during the production run, surprisingly, they weren't tremendously popular. I don't necessarily understand why. Probably, though, because just maybe people were used to pens being about this size, you know, the, this thinness, this girth, uh, feeling this way in the hand, and not so much the oversized. Nowadays, these are fairly well sought after because, yes, they're oversized, yes, they're vintage, yes, they write very, very well, they fill well, they feel good in the hand, they're, uh, they're not tremendously heavy. So, you know, you look at the difference in the size and sheer girth with these. And I'll tell you what I'll do, too, is I'll compare these to some more modern pens here in just a little while so you can see what they look like compared uh, to modern Schaefer's as well as other brands that you may be familiar with. When I was looking at purchasing a, uh, a Pelican, 
there was a guy who had a bunch of pelicans out and I was I took my PFM with me I walked over there and uh, he had a bunch of them that I could try and pick up so I picked up like the 800 and the 600 and I said I really like how the PFM feels in the hand so let me see those pelicans and let's compare them uh, to the PFM well um, let, let me share with you though some more common pens that you might be able to uh, be familiar with if you don't have a bunch of pelicans with which to try. Of course, all those pelicans that I tried before, I now have them in my collection. Um, a contemporary of the PFM uh, was Esterbrook. About the same time period, Esterbrook was, uh, was ubiquitous. They were out all over the place, 1940s production. Um, and uh, the Extrabrook J is one that I'll just set right here that you would have found from another American manufacturer. Modern day Waterman Karen. Set that down. You can see that's a lot more narrow. Uh, since we're talking about Schaefer, how about a modern day Schaefer Pop? You see these out nowadays uh, for about 20 bucks. This happens to be the R2-D2 Star Wars Edition lay that down there so you can get an idea of the size. Move these out of the way now. Lamy Safari. And I'm picking ubiquitous pens on purpose, ones that you may be very familiar with. You'll see, and there's a reason why people who do videos like this use pens that are very much in production and very widespread because you're familiar with them. So here would be, guess what? That's right. I think it's a rule that you have to have a Pilot Metropolitan in a video. I, I think there's just a just a rule about that. Some federal regulation. I don't know. Uh, how about a Twisby Eco? Inexpensive pen, um, relatively, uh, but very ubiquitous as well. So that gives you an idea of how it stacks up size-wise. Let's go ahead and put the other PFM here on the other side just to reinforce the size of the PFM. All right, I already gave you information about how there were at least five models of the Schaefer uh, for the PFM between 1958 or 59, depending upon what source you're reading from, and up through 1968 or so when I entered the world. Uh, now, like I said, it wasn't very well received and yet they still kept making them generation after generation. Personally, I'm glad that they did. Um, you can see there's a little bit of a difference between the two uh, as far as size-wise. The cap on the PFM3 is definitely bulging out and a little broader than on the PFM2, which has the metal cap. So that's one thing that I did notice in the big cap band here, big wide cap band on the PFM3 compared to the PFM2, uh, where you basically have uh, a nice long straight in this example here. Let's show you a little bit more of the anatomy here of the PFM2. When you lo look at the, the cap, and all PFMs are going to be this way, where you've got pretty much a squared off cap, and then it kind of tapers down into it becomes round. And that follows all the way down the barrel. And then you've got a round barrel all the way down till you get to the blind cap. The blind cap, like I showed you on that Schaefer snorkel demonstrator, uh, is where you would actually turn for the snorkel to extend. And they follow suit, just like they did on the cap, where they square that down, which actually makes it a whole lot easier to be able to turn that knob, in my opinion. Uh, and then you've got a nothing fancy square off there on the blind cap. Like I said, both of these are plastic and you can tell that uh, like injection molded plastic here. Size-wise they're fairly comparable as far as in terms of length. Just a hair more on the uh, just a hair more on the PFM3. Both with the Schaefer white dot for the two and the three. One of the things that they also did when they introduced this particular pen is from what I've read some have said that this is the first real uh, introduction of the inlaid nib. I really like the Schaefer inlaid nibs. They look really really neat and they generally perform very very well. So you've got the inlaid nib, you roll over and you've got your section and of course you've got that little hole there um, within that feed uh, through which that snorkel extends. Then you've got um, this section here for a grip. Then you've got 
Um, this is kind of a um, this is kind of a clutch ring that you would see if I was to take this apart. And I'm not going to do that. You want to see that? Go look at Steph's video, uh, like I told you about earlier, and you'll find the link in the uh, description of the video down below. You look at the PFM3 slip cap. You pretty much have the same thing. You can see the difference in the color of the nib, this being uh, a particular uh, 14 karat gold nib in the PFM3 compared to the palladium nib here on the PFM2. This particular one I bought, what, a year, maybe two years ago um, by somebody who had restored it. Got a fairly decent price, so I jumped at it. This one has more of a fine to extra fine nib, and I'll show you that when I write with it. This particular one came from a seller that I trust, AntiqueDigger.com. And if you're not taking advantage of your 10% off all your purchases at AntiqueDigger.com, why not use code TROY, T-R-O-Y, at checkout over at AntiqueDigger.com on all your purchases. And I know that right now he's got some fantastic old Waterman's. Uh, that are up on his site, and I thought I saw some old Schaefer's as well on his system right now. So, um, but I want to share with you the video that uh, Greg at Antique Digger had made about this particular pen. Hey everybody, Antique Digger back. Well, here's that Schaefer PFM2 in the blue with the stainless cap uh, restored. So this one, the nib on it is fantastic. It's crazy. It's a nice big broad nib and it uh, will write with a 0.62 on the horizontal strokes to 1.25 so a double broad but uh, this is a great pen. Got the Schaefer's made in the USA in the back. You, know, you got the white dot. Everything's been clean buff polished. There's the O-ring and everything's been reinstalled and uh, point seal and new sack. And you can see that here you see that the Snorkel tube lines up with the nib, and that nib, here we go, just a big juicy broad nib, palladium silver nib, this one will be listed here shortly, if you like big broad nibs, this is it. Now that you've seen some of the uh, nice close-up views that he had, and you can see or you have seen what I saw when I thought about purchasing this particular pen, uh, then uh, you can understand why I might want to have had that in my collection. I have not used this one tremendously a lot. I have used it a lot here lately, knowing that I was going to do this particular video. I went ahead and inked this pen back up, pulled it out, and yes, it writes every bit as fine as I remember it, um, and fortunately with the paper that I've been using here lately, it actually has been writing better than I remember, and I'm, I'm sure that a good cleaning had something to do with it, a much different ink had something to do with it and I didn't do any nib work on it but this actually writes I think better than it did the day that I got it after having been restored this one here writes so buttery smooth it's incredible to uh, to behold and uh, this is a very very broad very broad line that it lays down I'll give you a quick uh, overview as to uh, some statistics on this particular pen in general. Obviously, um, you've got five different models and you've got different construction materials in them. So I'll pick one that's representative of the line and I'll give you some statistics as far as height, weight, uh, diameter, and that sort of thing. Now, I was actually debating whether I should do the PFM 3 first and then the PFM 2, because that's the order in which I bought them, or should I do them in uh, chronological order as to when they were released? Eh, let's go ahead and do it that way, the PFM 2. I really like the fact it's got a good metal cap to it. Um, it's got a lot of heft to it, so it's not something that you're going to want to post. Now, or you can, you post nice and secure. 
but it really does back weight that pen quite a bit. So personally, I don't like to post the PFM2. I was using this as my pen of the day or several days uh, here running, and I was actually writing a letter to a friend of mine with both of these pens as well as some others, and the difference was stark, as you're going to see right here. So this is the PFM2 circa... 1959. This particular nib is a broad nib. One of the broadest broad nibs I've ever used. But this is so buttery smooth. This is incredible. This is an awesome writing experience. Um, it does not like to be on like regular old paper. And the other thing I found out, this particular pen doesn't particularly like Rhodia paper for some reason. It just did not write well when I tried writing on Rhodia. Uh, this is a very wet, very wet writer. I put into this pen some Pilot, Roshizuku, Konpeki. And you can probably even get a little bit of flex out of it. You want to lay down a real thick line? You can. Uh, but, quite honestly, it's going to give you enough of a broad line as it is. And you want to try it reversed? You can get almost a fine line out of it. So you can write with reverse. It is kind of scratchy. Very scratchy. But at least you get a fine line out of it. Instead, if you don't want this great big massive wet fire hose of a pen. It has its limitations. You know, it, it may be great if you want to lay down signatures uh, kind of thing or if you want to make, you know, a good line that's going to really stick out. This particular nib is fantastic for that. And like I said, it is so incredibly smooth and you really don't hear any feedback from it. Really great pen. Really wet. So, let's look at the PFM3. Again, this one does post this one not quite as bad as the other one, but it's still, uh, they're fairly, fairly good weight to that cap. So quite honestly, I wouldn't be uh, posting it to write with. It's still very comfortable in the hand. It's got a good feel to it. It's got a good length to it, good girth to it. I like oversized pens. Um, so this is something that I don't mind whatsoever as to how it feels. It, it looks pretty cool. Inlaid nibs, always gorgeous. Great, great innovation by Schaefer. And it writes very, very well. So let's get the PFM3. And you can see this is a fine to an extra fine line. And uh, this is, you know, this isn't the smoothest, um, but that's kind of the nature of dealing with a fine or an extra fine. I personally am not a lover of fine nibs or extra fine nibs. But this one does a good job. I was writing in my checkbook. Um, I've got a great big old 85 by 11 check register that I use on just on uh, copier paper. And uh, so I print it out and I keep a hard copy of everything. Even though I see everything online and in, in, in an app and on a website, I still keep a paper log of everything that I do for my finances. And this wrote very nicely. It's almost like an accounting nib uh, when you go to use it. So um, I do like this one. I put into this particular pen, I do believe, some Farney's Raven Black. This is a gold nib. It's not going to give you... I mean, it's a fairly rigid nib. You're not going to get a whole lot of line variation out of it, nor would you expect to. Um, it is not a flexible nib, not meant to be a flexible nib. Uh, but this is one of the smoother, fine nibs. If I could find a pen, a Schaefer PFM, that wrote halfway between this and that, I would be a right happy camper. So, just for grins, to show you the stark difference between the two, you can see how wet and how different these two pens are. Both of, both of them 
pen for men. Back when men weren't afraid to be called men. They weren't afraid to act like men. They weren't afraid to be masculine and manly. Uh, but anyway, uh, 19, late 50s through the 60s, the Schaefer PFM. Great production pen uh, by Schaefer, American company. Um, I like them. I do plan on buying some more, especially, like I said earlier, the PFM 5 is probably my next target just because I like it. And quite honestly, too, I shared with you about the colors that they had, the, the burgundy, the blue, the green, the gray, the black. You know what the black looks like. You know what the blue there looks like. And quite honestly, the burgundy. I really like the look of the burgundy, and I'm not a much of a burgundy guy, but I like how they look. The burgundy and gold tone look excellent together. They're classy looking. Uh, the green and the gray, I've seen them. Uh, eh, that's just personal taste. But there is enough of a variety out there for you uh, that if you're looking for a Schaefer PFM. You can find them on eBay. Uh, you can find, uh, oftentimes, restorers will have them and have them ready to go if you can find them, like I did this one from AntiqueDigger.com. Remember to go to his website. Use the discount code TROY for 10% off from all of your orders at Antique Digger. So, great pens, great additions uh, to my collection. I have been using both of these for gee whiz, just about everything over the past week or so. Don't regret it whatsoever. I got this one less than a week ago. I got this one a couple of years ago, and I've had it inked up for you know, over the past week, and I've been using it incessantly. PFM, kind of hard to go wrong.